Hi everyone, I wanted to create this sultry, seductive look. It's a deep, smoky eyeshadow look that doesn't really make my eyes look tired and I was in the mood to feel a little sexy today. So I'm going to show you how to create this look. So what I'm going to do is start with my skin prep. I have a little bit left, but this is the Patera Essence. So I'm layering my skincare and I'm starting with the thinnest. So I'm going to go in and apply the essence on my face. After that, I'm going to do a quick micro mist. This is the Pearl Diffusion. It's very relaxing. After that, I'll be using my eye cream and I'm almost out of it. So I'm going to use very sparingly, which you actually don't need a lot under your eyes because you also don't want it to be super greasy and slippery. What I'll do sometimes is I will take the eye cream and bring it down towards my cheek area here. It just helps with any dryness I have. And whatever's left over, I'll just pat a little on my lids like so. I think for today for moisturizer, I'm going to use face cuddle and spot treat where I have any dryness, which is normally around my cheek area. I like using face cuddle as a moisturizer treatment. So if my skin feels really dry, I'll go in and use it as a moisturizer topper. But for today, I'm actually going to use it as my main moisturizer. There's no scent added to this formula, but it smells like fresh grass, which I love that scent. So for my base makeup, I'm using my tried and true Daydream Cushion, but instead of Gentle Light, I'm using one shade lighter than my skin tone, and it's going to be in Cloud Dream. And because this formula has a sheer to medium build, I can really focus on brightening my cheek area and use very little, very sparingly around the rest of my face. With a damp sponge, I am loading it up. I'm using around this much. I'll add the teardrop here and here, like that. It's like, whoa, it's so bright compared to the rest of my skin, but trust the process. The rest, what I'll do is I kind of will use this as a highlighter and I will brighten the areas that I want to brighten around here and here to just brighten up the shadow. Now I will start from the bottom up. You're noticing how I'm just buffing it, just barely touching using very light strokes. You notice I'm not really touching around here. I'm just blending out the edge. Whatever is left over, kind of just pat it over your eyes like this. This just helps also reduce the veins you see. It just softens it. It's just so crazy if you see the difference. So I've established the first base layer. I'll go back and finish it up once I'm more done with my eye makeup. Before I begin, just gonna add lip cushion to soften my lips and I'm using the shade Van Gogh now I can move on to the eyes just going to mattify my eyelids and also my brow area here the reason why I'm also mattifying my brows is because you see how I don't really have a lot of brow hairs and the space is in between it's my skin so whenever I apply brow pencil or any brow product sometimes you can see the shininess of the skin and in a way, it kind of defeats the illusion of realistic looking brows because your brows are mostly just hairs. It doesn't, it's not supposed to look shiny. Um, so when you mattify it, it actually reduces that shine and it looks more natural. So I'm just going in and just making sure this is nice and mattified. And I'm testing out a prototype translucent powder, which I really like, but I want to test it more. So now I have to shape out my brows. And this is what really makes the biggest difference for my face, honestly. I like to start from the bottom and I'll go back and look. Then I'll match it on the other side. This brow is naturally more round. This one is more arched. So I'm going to try and um, compromise and meet in the middle. I'm using very light strokes, barely touching. Because so I want to be able to go back and really sculpt them in once the rest of my makeup is more finished. Getting, getting it like 70% there. It's really the last 30% is really where I like to go in and finish it. Okay, so I'm pretty good here. Um, I'm gonna go back and finish it later. But in the meantime, I'm gonna use my eyeshadow palette. I'm so excited. So we're finally back in stock. We were sold out when we launched and I mean, it's amazing and I'm so grateful, but it just sucked because I, I wanted to show it and talk about it more, but we were sold out. So I kind of had to like hold back a little bit and um, now I can finally use them. They're just, so, they're so beautiful. It took 
a year for my team and I to develop the color story and not just the color story also the finish I think that's what makes it special because you're probably wondering like do we do I really need an, another neutrals why do we need another neutrals and what makes our neutrals different neutrals are classic they're timeless they're a staple I think for so long I um I detoxed a lot of stuff out of my life I took my hiatus from YouTube I stopped wearing a lot of makeup and foundation and I just took that time to dial back on a lot of excess that I was having in my life, like makeup and social media and just life. Um, so coming back in and getting excited again about makeup and really taking time to celebrate my ritual, I think it made sense for my team and I to reimagine what a neutrals collection would look like today. So I will be using both the Rodan palette and the Da Vinci palette. The Rodin palette is more soft, it's more everyday. I wouldn't say everyday, I guess it's really the vibe that you're feeling, like this is softer and this is more sultry. So I'm gonna play around with both palettes and show you how I integrate the colors. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna look at my eyes and I'm gonna see where I can place the colors, what I can accentuate. So the first shade I'll be using is Timeless. So this is a light matte brown color. Just very softly build the contour. It's always better to apply less than more because it's harder to remove excess. It's easier to add more. With a clean brush, I'm just blending the outer edge. Okay, and again, I'm doing another very thin layer. I'm going soft and then I'm gonna build up the intensity. This is the same shade, this is timeless. And I'm going to keep adding very thin layers to slowly build the intensity. I want to really take my time with this. I'm going to add a little under my lower lash line. I don't want to add too much because it'll just drag my eyes down. Really like what I'm doing is I'm looking at the shape of my eyes and I have slight downturn eyes. I'm contouring my eyes to create a more lifting effect with my eyes. But not too much because I don't want it to look too cat eye-ish. But I want it to complement my natural eye shape. I don't want to work against it. So the next shade is going to be in Sculpt and it's a beautiful dark earth brown color. It's a great neutral earth color. And you notice how I'm staying very close to the outer edge of my lash line, applying it where I want most of the intensity. And the great thing about this formula is that you have so much playtime to blend it's incredibly forgiving because I actually don't think I'm really good at blending my eyeshadows. You would think I would be good after all these years, but I don't know. Some people just have a natural talent with makeup, you know? I think what I look most for when it comes to any makeup formulations is just how effortless and easy it is to blend. Because um, I don't really have a lot of patience. I'm an Aries. I have like no patience. I'll be real with you. I am just lazy, you know? Because not all eyeshadows are formulated the same. The texture is also important too. Like you see how... It's very airbrushed looking. A lot of eyeshadows in the past, they felt very dry and very chalky. And in a way, it kind of made it hard to blend. Just using the same sculpt, just really contouring my eyes. Just going in, blending. There's something so therapeutic about watching people do their makeup. I actually learned that a lot of people who watch my makeup tutorials, they don't necessarily follow the tutorial itself. They just like watching it. I like watching a lot of cooking videos. Most of the time, I would never make what I watch. But it's just so satisfying to see the transformation. I think makeup also has that effect too. It also has instant gratification at the end where you see the finished results. I'm just gonna continue blending. Okay, nice. I'm liking how it's looking. This is Portrait, which is my favorite shade in the Da Vinci palette. Just to show you how she looks. So pretty. What I'm gonna do is add this right on my lids. That. and it just creates that satin texture also adds like a little more dimension to my eyes without looking like it's too much what's cool about this formula is that it doesn't emphasize your texture so i find that other eyeshadows don't really work with my eyes i find that they're very heavy sometimes and they emphasize especially if it's like a shimmer satin or pearl or metallic even it just emphasizes my lines and i like that this has like a really soft airbrushed effect so I'm using this shade called Spumato. That's what it looks like. Just tap very gently and lightly on the outer edge like that. I'm just gonna use a clean blending brush and I'm just gonna blend. It's like butter. Then I'm gonna take Whisper. 
This is Whisper. So Whisper is a neutral satin beige. I normally used to add highlighter on my brow bone, but I've just noticed like just along the years my makeup style has changed and it doesn't really look as flattering on me like it used to, but I still want a little bit of brightness without adding that pop. So Whisper is a nice in-between where you see how it has a little bit of that very soft pearl effect. It's like a satin pearl. And I like to use it to kind of blend in the rest of my upper lids. Really happy with how it looks so far. I'm going to just clean up under my eyes and use a little bit of concealer. Clean up the edge like so. So now I can go in and curl my lashes before I start with my eyeliner. That way I don't mess anything up. Just gonna soften the edge right around here. And I'm just going to line my waterline. Just gonna gently lift my eyes and just very gently brush it and smoke it up and out like this staying very close to the lash line and i'm just trying to even out my eyes right here i'm just really sculpting out the line and making it very thin almost like a whisper i'm gonna go in and apply mascara this is etude house's curl fix it's a favorite of jessica vu's and I could totally see why she loves it. Just keeps your lashes lifted all day. Okay, so I'm gonna heat up this wooden stick and go in to curl them in place. And it feels so satisfying. It's hard to explain. Just don't poke yourself in the eye. I really like these lenses, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them on. I just feel like a different person with lenses. I'm like, who's this bitch? So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these lashes on my eyes. I just finished applying my lashes and you see how this eye, the lashes are sculpted outwards. I'm gonna do the same for this eye and I'm using the um, wooden stick technique. Go ahead and kind of like move the lashes this way basically i'm just sculpting them in this direction so you see how i just sculpted them in place so they're just fanning out you see like some of the glue right here and the spaces in between because i don't have any lashes i'm gonna go in and just fill it with black liquid liner i think i'm just going to use the m cosmetics brush tip liner just to fill them in like this just to darken it so i'm just gonna do a very subtle line so it looks like a lash do the same on this side so now what I'm going to do is finish off the rest of my base makeup. This concealer prototype. And I'm just going right under my eye to just brighten this area. That's really where I need the most brightness because as I'm getting older, I'm just noticing I'm losing a lot of fat and collagen around my orbital bone. And so it's just creating darker shadows around my eyes. Like I remember before I used to be like, cover your dark circles. And I didn't have any and I was 20, you know. I'm very intentional with where I place my makeup. Now I'm gonna go in to powder my face, focusing where I have the most shine, which is around from my nose in cheek area. I'm using here a brow pomade to just finish the rest of my brows. I'm gonna start along the lower part of my brows to really thicken the lower part. And it closes the space between my eyes and brows, just creates the illusion of bigger looking eyes. What a difference that makes, right? You see, like, I didn't really add that much, but it just makes such a big difference. 90% of my brows are just painted on like this. I want my blush to look barely there, and I'm using here Heaven's Glow in Baroque. It just gives, like, the most beautiful, barely there looking blush and highlighter. This formula is so great because it really does blur the skin. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use here a flat blush brush. So this has, like, a pink lilac shift which really has like a beautiful effect look at that adding it along the high points of my cheeks and sculpting it in this way and around my forehead and my jawline so i'm add a little bit more to amp it up and that's a great thing about heaven's glow is that you can layer and layer and layer and it never looks like it's too much it doesn't get chalky it's a really special formula and so you can see the difference Whatever's left over, I'm just adding it right on my cheeks like this. And now for contouring. 
Well, it's finally back in stock, Terra. Terra sold out for a moment. It's my contouring shade. I know it doesn't look really pretty. Just showing you the formula is incredibly soft. I would say it's the softest stick blush on the market. What I like about it is because it's so soft to blend, you can create the most natural looking contour where it doesn't disturb your makeup. So I'm just going in to really sculpt out how I want my nose to look. Go in to sculpt the rest out. And what I like to do sometimes with my fingers, I'll go in to just blend it out like this. And it just looks so natural. The best contouring is the one where it doesn't look like you contoured. So that's kind of the look I'm trying to achieve. Now I'm going to get ready for the lips. I'm removing Van Gogh and like my lips are so soft. The dead skin just comes out so easily. I don't have to do any like lip scrub or anything. It just comes right off. My natural lip color is more neutral than it is pink. I feel like everyone should actually try to observe their natural lip color. Like, is it neutral? Does it lean more cool? Does it lean more warm? And that just makes the biggest difference when it comes to choosing and finding your lip shade. And I'm using Teddy along my upper cupid's bow like I normally do. This is like my routine. Because it's soft blur, I'm just going to go in to blur out this line so it just looks more natural. So for my highlighter, I'm using this Korean brand called Glint. It's a very soft, frosty highlighter. Something that I don't have from my own brand, so it's very natural. I'm just dusting it right on my nose bridge. I kind of want to darken my eyes just a bit more just to add a touch of drama. Just darken the outer edge like that. This is the final look. I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna go in and kind of like fix my hair, so I will be right back. So I just did little curls around the front part of my hair, and I have these cute gloves that I'm putting on. So this is my finished look. I feel like a different person. It's kind of crazy. It's like, who is she? I'm going to finish off with my favorite signature fragrance. I've been wearing this for years. It is the Baccarat Rouge 540. You ever find a scent where you're like, this is my scent? This is my scent. What I love about this fragrance is, first off, the bottle is just gorgeous. So Baccarat is a very old French glass making company. They've been making the most beautiful glasses for like hundreds of years, I think. And they have a very special ruby colored glass. And the reason why it's called Rouge 540 is because I believe um, when the temperature gets to 540 when they're making the glass, it turns into this beautiful ruby red color. But I would say if I had to describe the scent, the top notes are, it's like burnt sugar. That's what it smells like. It's very sweet. But throughout the day, it starts changing. It becomes muskier and the base note is just very deep and almost like umami, if that makes sense. It has like this umami scent. The The play on the sweetness and the musk, it's a nice juxtaposition. And I feel like it really represents me. Like I have the sweet side, playful side, and I have like, you know, the other side. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Good luck. <laughs>